Welcome back to Capital Edition. For this segment, either our set designer has gone bananas, along with the wardrobe department, or we've gone out of the studio and into a different world. One that's as new as all the fresh paint around here, and at the same time, almost as old as life on Earth. We're beneath the reptile house at the National Zoo in a soon-to-be-opened exhibit dedicated to some of director Michael Robinson's favorite animals, those with no backbone. Compared to the sex life of the pandas, uh, some of our viewers might think that just the word invertebrate is a yawn. I mean, I'm going to sleep. What do you mean invertebrates? What's this all about? Well, it's our attempt to show you that the 99% of the animal kingdom that doesn't have a backbone is exciting and beautiful and brilliant and wonderful to look at. And I think this tank alone shows the whole thing. All these are animals even though they look like flowers, even though some of them are static in one place. They're all animals and not plants. They eat elaborated food and they behave just like animals in many ways. And you know, if we took you back 650 million years and you were in a, an aqua lung, a scuba suit, in the Paleozoic, this is more or less what you'd see. These animals that are here now were there then, not the same species, but the same general types. Although Robinson admittedly gets more excited than most of us over the sight of a peppermint shrimp or a sea cucumber, for anyone, the exhibit is a fascinating glimpse into a world most of us rarely see and barely understand. Another tank, for instance, is filled with cold water, recreating the depths of the Pacific, where again, the animals don't look like animals at all. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one of the really complicated marine worms. They're called polychaetes, which means many legs, I guess. And that thing that looks like a f bunch of uh, a magician's flower uh, is actually a, a whole mass of processes that the worm uses to waft currents of food. It stays in one place, unlike an earthworm. They have eyes, but movement detector eyes rather than image-forming eyes. So it's, it can't see us, but if we cast a shadow over it, it would all retract into its tube out of harm's way. On the other hand, or tentacle, remarkable eyesight is an attribute of the cuttlefish, which isn't really a fish at all, but a squid-like creature that is able to alter its appearance with the mood of the moment, or instantly adapt its color and texture to its surroundings. Toss in a strange sex life and you have one of Dr. Robinson's favorite animals. The word glorious applies to cuttlefish. They've got this fantastic reactivity to everything that's going on around them. They're the only invertebrate that has an eye equivalent to our own in structure and in complexity and in discriminating ability. If you look a cuttlefish in the eye, it's like looking at a very cherished girlfriend, I think. They usually mate once, and then they all die synchronously. And they're uh, what you might call the Big Bang theory of, of uh, reproduction. One mating, and then death. Because it could be curtains for the cuttlefish any time, waiting in the wings is a 22-pound substitute star that may be 75 years old. Although he's unusually large, lobsters are not rare, of course, but that's the point. The invertebrate house is an uncommon exhibit of common creatures we know little about. Jaron Horsley is the curator. What makes this, this exhibit stand apart, do you feel, at the zoo? It's the newest one, and I guess then it is benefiting from, from some ideas about how to, to display and how to, how to bring things to the people. Well, of course, there's, there's two new parts of it. One of them is it represents uh, the majority of the animal kingdom, and most zoos don't in exhibit invertebrates 
to begin with, and so that's new. We're, we're redefining wildlife to include invertebrates, which are really the dominant animal on Earth today. As far as exhibit techniques go, I think we're, we're exploring here uh, many more interactive exhibits, much more involvement with the professional staff. Uh, we've opened up the behind the scenes, so there's no barrier now between the public and the people who work here. Anyway, it's One area of interaction will be over a microscope hooked to a color TV. And when the exhibit is open to the public, people will be able to come up to this open window, talk to the person at the microscope, get a drop of water out of the aquarium, he will put it under and then they'll be able to explore a drop of water by manipulating the slide around. From displays dedicated to the Earth's dominant critters, the insects, to prehistoric animals like the chambered nautilus, some of these creatures are the sort of stuff nightmares are made of. But it's a dream come true for Robinson and Horsley, the first permanent exhibit of its type at any zoo in the country. Ironically, they hope all of us will not rush right down. The place is designed to accommodate fewer than 100 visitors at a time and no little children teenagers or older. So we're, we're asking people to come through here to be able to take their time and to really uh, look at something closely and not feel hurried or a push that, that whatever we present they should have the time to look at and really digest. If we're too popular we're afraid we're just going to get uh, jammed with requests for people to come in and, and therefore no visitor will get very much at all. The first new animal house at the zoo in more than five years, the invertebrate exhibit will open to the public this Thursday morning.